For Kruma Media's Polity, I'm Sashni Wadi. Joining me today is Zelda Lachrantz, aide of former President Nelson Mandela, here to unpack her latest book, What Nelson Mandela Taught Me, Timeless Lessons on Leadership and Life. So your book begins in 2015 with a string of tweets that set off a hailstorm of public outcry. Can you explain briefly, as you do in the book, why you sent out those tweets and then how you reflected on them? So um, it was 2015 and not a lot of people will remember where we were as a country at that point and we were very frustrated as South Africans. Um, you know, there was a lot of talk of corruption, service delivery was declining and um, people were very, very frustrated and so was I. And um, I chose a very bad moment when I was angry because you know you never tweet when you're angry. Um, I chose a very bad moment and a bad set of words to express myself and I sent off these tweets and just expressed my frustration. And that unraveled and there was a lot of reaction to it. A lot of people were very angry at me. But then also because of the words that I chose, you know, the insensitivity of the words that I chose, I hurt a lot of people in the process. And to those people, I then apologized. Now, looking back, I would still say something when needs be, but I will choose my words a little better. You know, it happened 10 years ago. So I do think that I've matured quite a bit in the process. I hope so. And I've learned from this mistake. And that's for me the most important thing that people say, um, or they ask me, do you wish it never happened? And I say, no, it's good that it happened because I learned from it. And so mistakes are good um, for us to move forward. Now you also say in the book that you don't feel overprotective of South Africa's colonial administrator Jan van Riebeek. However, you say that it riles you that his arrival in South Africa was used by former President Jacob Zuma for the country's problems more than 350 years later. Mm. Um, can you just explain your thoughts on this? Um, you know, social media is not the platform to express yourself when you have a limited amount of words to express yourself. The problem was that um, you know, there was a lot of excuses made for the declining state of South Africa at that point. And Jan van Riebeek was just one of them. And I don't have, you know, any, any emotional attachment to him or anything. Yes, that's how I came to be here. But, um, you know, it's not that I'm overprotective of him. So the former president used half-truths because it is true that that was the cause of apartheid, um, but it's not the whole truth. Um, you know, if things in 1994 when Madiba was president, we really saw the possibilities in this country and that's, that this country can work. And even, you know, after Madiba's presidency with Mr Mbeki, we did well as a country. So to just blame one section of history is not fair to single out people because it just causes division. Um, so that was what, what, what frustrated me a lot. And you also reveal in the book that the tweet storm that you set off had actually affected you in such a bad way that you were questioning your existence. Mm -hmm. um, but you describe a moment with a stranger during your visa appointment mm -hmm. and it said it reminded you of Madiba's words that an ordinary person can change your life. Can you just tell us a bit about that interaction? So yes, um, ordinary people changed Nelson Mandela's life. I can attest to ordinary people changed my life and I also with this book hope that people will realize their individual power and that they can be the one to change a person's life in just a small act of kindness. So after this whole Twitter storm, I was at the visa center in Pretoria applying for a UK visa. And I was so ashamed of myself still and people were very, very angry and hurt still. Um, and you know, there was a clear division. Most white people were angry at me because um, they say I apologized to Jacob Zuma even though I didn't because I apologized about the words that I chose. Um, and uh, black people were, were, were angry and hurt because um, they felt that I didn't consider them because I used my whiteness, you know, in, in my tweets. So I was standing in this queue and ashamed of myself and trying to hide. Um, and in front of me, there was an Afrikaans guy and I could see in just in his eyes, you know, that there was disgust in his eyes towards me. And behind me, there was a, a, a young black woman and I didn't pay attention, you know, I was trying to hide and not, not to be seen. And when I, when I had done my biometrics, as I walked out of the building, this black woman that stood behind me, she said to me, um, are you Zaldina? I said to her, yes, and I immediately wanted to apologize. And she just said to me, said to me can I please give you a hug? And, you know, I just started crying because you expect everyone to be angry at you. And she reached out to me and she really saved my life. She saved me for myself. 
um, just give me a bit of, bit of confidence, you know, and she didn't necessarily approve of the words that I used because she did consider it a bit insensitive, but, um, you know, she, she watched this whole ordeal and she said she just wanted to give me a hug. And that's the kind of humanity, you know, that Madiba always showed people. And um, I really, really appreciated that. Yeah, and like you said, in the book you discuss the importance of compassion and forgiveness. How did former President Nelson Mandela embody these qualities in his daily interactions? So every day he would look actively for opportunities, you know, where he could show compassion to people. He would pick up a newspaper in the morning and read about, um, you know, suffering of, of someone who had a bad accident or went through a bad ordeal. And then he would ask me to trace those people and find them and reach out to them. And there's many, many South Africans that can tell you stories like that where he reached out to them out of the blue. And, you know, it showed you, of course, because it was Nelson Mandela, it was extra special. That's how he lived every single day. And he looked, actively looked for opportunities to show that compassion and empathy to people. And how did working with him change your views on race and identity in South Africa? It's a very, very complex subject, um, identity specifically, and I don't want to go too much detail into it because that's not for me, um, you know, what I want the book to be. I want people, ordinary people, not analysts and academics and so on, but ordinary people to relate to these stories and change their lives because I, I do feel that that's not a market that's reached enough. Someone used a beautiful quote, when the elephants trample, the grass gets hurt. And it's always, you know, it's the, it's the top echelon of South Africa. People fight and they discuss all these heavy issues, but the people at grassroots level, um, you know, they feel lost in all this, this conversation. So for me, I, you know, I'm a very proud Afrikaans-speaking South African. I live in the most beautiful country. I'm exceptionally privileged, always have been. And, um, you know, I'm very aware of um, the country that I live in and the, the problems that we face and that my individual contributions in the smallest way can make a difference. So that's what I focus on, you know, when, I, when you talk about identity, that's where I want to be. When you talk about race, we, we still have pockets of racism in this country. And I believe one of the biggest opportunities and gifts that Mr. Mandela gave me was exploration of other cultures and getting to know the people in my own country. And um, I want to share that in the book with people to say there is a racism problem still because every, every year, December, um, usually, you know, when people start <laughs> using alcohol in excess, then you see, you know, these incidents. And it's not acceptable. As much as we say 30 years after democracy, there's still more service delivery issues and the poverty and the housing and all these social ills. We also have to say that 30 years after democracy, there cannot be an excuse for racism. And bad service delivery is not an excuse for racism. So we need to speak openly about these things and see how we can impact just our own environment. It starts with the self and it starts in your own environment. So my circle of friends know exactly what I allow in my environment environment and what's unacceptable and that's how you change society if we all just do that that's how you change people's mindsets and in the book you say there's a difference between populism and sincere contributions and you say that in our current politics it's difficult to distinguish between the two can you just tell us what you mean yeah so you know what we've we've, we've got this burden of history that we all carry as South Africans and we want to make this country work if you look at World War II, for instance, it was populism that was used to divide people and to stoke this war that ended up in World War II. And um, so I'm a, I'm a very firm believer, having come from apartheid and also um, living through censorship and um, you know, now, now realizing that everything I consumed in the news was highly censored, um, I don't want us to go back there. You know, I don't want that to repeat. So I'll do anything in my power to make sure that populism isn't used to sway people. So the truth must be put out there to people because we live in the age of information. People need to have access to all the different sides and still make up your mind. I'm not saying the populists sh shouldn't be followed. You know, they have these, these noble ideals in all political parties in this country. And um, if they promote them, um, you know, then good. But don't use race specifically to divide people because it's not healthy for our society and the blame game doesn't achieve anything. That's one of the things that Mr. Mandela also said is that um, blame doesn't change the past. So we have to acknowledge the past and our history but we have to keep moving forward and have to keep our eyes set on the future. You know, how do we build from here? This is where we are. 
And how do you see Nelson Mandela's legacy influencing South Africa and the world today? That's why I use the title Timeless, because I do feel that these lessons are still very relevant today. I get to do with a, a lot of tourists that come to South Africa. They see us and they see Nelson Mandela with fresh eyes. And he remains one of the biggest and most revered leaders of our time. So we all lived at the same time as him. You know, we need to retell his story so that populism doesn't distract the, from the truth. So that the story doesn't get turned or history gets rewritten, um, you know, just because people people are frustrated with their current circumstances. So I think the timeless part in the book is really to help people make sense with ordinary stories and anecdotes to make sense of where we are today. Lastly, Zelda, how has your own journey evolved um, since the passing of Nelson Mandela more than 10 years ago? It's been a very difficult journey. I didn't give myself time to grieve just after he passed away. Um, because I published my first book and then and then it was this media too and it was worldwide and then I was so busy uh, with speaking engagements but when strangely when this whole Twitter story started it forced me to stop and it forced me to grieve so um, you know I still miss him every single day and I miss just his presence it's not that you have to talk to him every day but you miss his presence and knowing that he's there it's, it's taught me a lot about grief and, uh, and about people and um, I look back at the journey and I think what an incredible gift I received from him and um, my obligation is to keep sharing him the person that I knew so closely with people so um, I, um, I don't recognize myself when I look at the 23 year old um, that started working for me in 1994. I don't believe that we are ever completely changed as human beings. I do think that the, um, there's things that I will battle for the rest of my life, like, like all people that can identify with me. I do think, um, you know, we as humans, we continue to evolve. But I think we need to create a kinder society because we are kind people in South Africa. We are very compassionate people. We need to create the kindness so that I can reach out to you to say to you what I'm about to say. Do you find it offensive? Can you please help me understand um, what I'm about to do? You know, um, how is it seen by other people? Because otherwise we don't give each other permission to learn. And I think that is something um, that Madiba would have wanted us to do is give each other permission to learn and take each other's hand and say we face the future, we are hopeful but we face the future and from here we, we, we are willing to work together. That was Zelda Lehrans discussing her latest book, What Nelson Mandela Taught Me, Timeless Lessons on Leadership and Life.